If you remove Bison Relay's main features, you'll find an incredibly advanced and easy to use SPV wallet with enabled Lightning Network capabilities. Why is this important? Well, simply put, it's ready for mobile integration and will be easily installed on older mobile devices without the need for masses of storage or memory. SPV wallets are lightweight as they don't require the downloading of the full blockchain. It's essential to note Bison Relay is not a full node wallet like the Crediton. Bison Relay is suitable for small and micro transactions and storing small amounts of DCR. Another interesting thing about Bison Relay and its wallet functionality is it's non-custodial, meaning users are in full control of their funds at all times. This wallet can also process on-chain transactions as efficiently as it can process Lightning Network transactions. Let's have a look at some of this functionality by heading over to the LN Management tab and selecting the Overview section. In this area, we can see an overview of our balances. Max Sendable and Max Receivable are our Lightning Network balances. Max Receivable is used for receiving tips and payments on the Lightning Network. This amount needs to be as high as possible. The balance is shown at the amount of Lightning liquidity you can receive from a Lightning Liquidity Provider or LP. When you start using Bison Relay, this can be a hard concept to get your head around. But just remember, if this is low, you can't receive Lightning payments. Max Sendable is the balance you'll use for sending and receiving messages and sending payments or tips to other users. If you're only using Bison Relay for sending and receiving messages, 0.1 DCR will last a very long time. The on-chain balance is the amount you have in your SPV wallet that's not being used for the Lightning Network. This balance can be used for any on-chain transaction as well as creating Lightning channels. The wallet area shows if your balance is in sync with the blockchain. We're up to date and we're ready to go. If you want to receive funds to your default account, click the Generate Deposit Address to make a new receive address. This also displays a QR code to help with receiving funds from external wallets. Bison Relay allows you to create accounts effortlessly, which enables you to separate your on-chain funds. For example, enter a name and press create and the account is made. If you want to move funds into this account, head over to the on-chain area. Here we select the account to receive funds and generate an address. Then in the send section, we choose the account the money will come from, paste the address, enter the amount and press the send on-chain button. This area can also be used if you want to receive funds from someone using a different wallet. For example, I'll copy the address, head over to the chat section and paste it in a chat with Phoenix and wait for him to pay me. This address can be pasted into any chat platform or web page, not just by some relay, allowing you to receive on-chain payments, tips, donations to this wallet. The channels area is the Lightning Network section. This is where we can rebalance or set up our Lightning Network channels. In my case, the top one is my inbound channel for receiving payments and tips and the bottom is my outbound channel used for sending and receiving messages and sending tips and payments. At the moment, there isn't an obvious way of knowing which is which. What I tend to do is load each one up with a different amount of DCR. The inbound has 0.5 DCR capacity and the outbound has 0.1 DCR capacity. If you need to rebalance these channels due to being low on funds, which can happen, especially if you're sending and receiving plenty of tips and payments. You'll need to close the channel with the low funds and open another one. At this point, it's very useful to know which channel is which. In the past, I've ended up opening two outbound channels, which meant I had no inbound channel. This got really confusing. I couldn't work out why I wasn't able to receive funds. The payments area gives the user the ability to generate personalized and unique Lightning Network invoices. LN invoices are used in every LN transaction, but are generated automatically. In this area, you can create your own invoice and send the invoice ID to a person you want payment from. How this works, type in the description for what you want payment for, enter the amount to be paid and press the generate invoice button. From here, copy the invoice ID and send it to the person you want payment from. So you can see how this looks from the other side. I'll complete the invoice here. Paste the invoice ID and press enter. This decodes the invoice to provide the full details to the person who's paying it. If they're happy, they can hit the pay invoice button and the invoice will be paid over the Lightning Network in a matter of seconds. In this case, the invoice failed because you're unable to pay your own invoices. The network section provides details of peers you're connected to 
and allows you to connect to peers manually. I've not used this section yet, but once I find a reason to, I'll do an update. Final area to discuss is the backup section. Although the SPV wallet is backed up from seed when you set up by some relay, the lightning channels are not. In order to recover funds in these channels, you'll need to click the save SPV file and save it somewhere safe on your computer or other storage device. An important note here is if you close and reopen channels, this file will need to be resaved to back up the new channels and the funds in them.